coming up on this episode of The New Fly Fisher. We're in Wind River Country, just outside the town of Lander in the heart of Wyoming. We're on the make for big high mountain brown trout and of course, the rainbows that this region is so famous for. This big fish adventure starts right now on The New Fly Fisher. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new fly fisher is supported by Wind River Visitors Council, Orvis Fly Fishing, Adipose Boat Works, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, The West is full of quirky mountain towns that are well known by outdoor lovers like Jackson Hole, Boulder and Missoula. But there are plenty more that are lesser known and have loads of charm and have outstanding fishing within a very short distance of town. Lander, Wyoming is one such town. There's a vibrant energy in this community with funky shops and art galleries, locally owned restaurants and old school watering holes. Lander is accessible from a wonderful regional airport out of Riverton, but if you like to drive, you can also access it from Casper and Jackson Hole. Our outdoor adventure begins here. This week, I'm fishing on a budget. I go on a do-it-yourself trout fishing trip close to Lander. I'll visit three trout streams, the closest being five minutes from town, and the furthest just under an hour away. In preparation for this trip, I enlisted the services of Sweetwater Fishing Guide Service owner George Hunker to show me where to go and what flies he recommends. Hiring a local guide is always the best way to explore new water, especially if you're only there for a short period of time. Not just five minutes outside of Lander, Wyoming, in Wind River country, um, you've got ample opportunity for numerous streams to catch trout. This happens to be one of those streams exactly. It's a small stream just outside of town um, and the water's low and the water's clear. So stealth and, and cunning are truly important today. We're gonna work our way up. We're gonna boulder hop and we're gonna hit all these little pockets. I've got a stimulator um, and uh, 18 inches of, of um, uh, line to a uh, Pertagon dropper. We're gonna see what we can do today. One of the keys to fishing this kind of stream, this bouldery, pockety water, is to, um, is to not have any fly line out. Always uh, have as much fly line in your rod as you can, high stick, keep that fly line off. These fish are super spooky. Anything that they see will put them down. So your tippet and your leader are really the only thing that should be touching the water. Nice. Right down the middle, right down the middle of the chute, Nice little, nice, nice trout. Took the rainbow, yeah. Tiny little trout, so fun. That's what you're here for. You have a chance of catching a big one. You really do. The barbless hook. Gorgeous little fat little dude. That is one fat little trout. Look at that. Just a perfect, perfect specimen. Just amazing. That's what it's all about here. It's all about the wild. It's all about the seclusion. It's all about catching amazing, amazing specimens of brown trout, rainbow trout. Just outside of Lander. I mean, this is public water and it's five minutes from town. Amazing. better fish here. A little bit of a rodeo took me down into the next pool down, but that's okay. It's like a brown trout. No, it's a rainbow. Look at the color on this dude. 
ate the Pertagon. Let's get him into some quiet water here. That's better. Awesome little rainbow. Barbless hook just pops out. Dark fish. Wild. Just amazing. Just amazing. So don't give up on a pool if you roll through it a couple times and you don't pick anything up. They're there and they'll eat. One of the things that I've noticed when fishing these plunge pools is that the two bigger fish that we've hooked have come at the actual tail right here of the pool where the water plunges down into the other. Um, that's generally, you know, where a lot of the big fish will hang out because that's where the food gets funneled. So they're big enough and strong enough to be able to stand the current, but they'll sit there waiting to pick off nymphs or hoppers or anything that comes down through the chute. So um, that we lost a good one come from a tail. That last fish came from a tail. I think we're starting to develop a pattern. I'm going to start fishing all the way out of the pool and see if we can pick up some more. When fishing DIY out of Lander, Wyoming, don't be afraid to go into a fly shop, buy some flies and ask the right questions. Where to go, what trails to use, what streams to fish, they will help you out. We're gonna take a walk about a half an hour away from all the crowds so that we're all by ourselves and get into some brown trout and some rainbows. So this fish came up and ate the dry. So I moved and I switched to the bottom of the pool, let it rest for about 30 seconds, then drifted it back through and this time he ate the nymph. Now these are barbless hooks and these are crazy rocks. So watch your step. That's fun. Oh my gosh, what a gorgeous little rainbow. Just a fantastic fish, ate the nymph. I mean, look at this, it's paradise. It's absolutely gorgeous. The fish play, they're hungry. Tiny little barbless nymph. Pops right out. We're gonna let him go right in this little back eddy. There you go, absolutely perfect. So. The reason why I caught that fish is because I actually raised it on a parachute atoms and I missed it. So I moved down to the lower part of the pool and I fished that for a little while, maybe 20, 30 seconds. And I came back up and I did the exact same drift. On that drift, the fish didn't eat the atoms, it ate the pertagon, it ate the nymph. So rest it, come back and fish it again and there's a good chance that fish was interested in the beginning, it'll come back and eat again. Same situation, fish came up to eat it, I missed it, threw, threw in another cast, and the fish came around and ate it. And this is a spectacular, gorgeous little brown trout. Oh my gosh, if you could have painted one yourself, it would not be this beautiful. Wow. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. What a gorgeous little fish. I'm here to tell you that I honestly think that that was the most beautiful little brown trout I have ever seen. Whoa, just incredible. What a gorgeous little fish. I love this game. The base of a waterfall is generally a pretty 
difficult spot to fish. Uh, not only do you have the prevailing wind from the valley, but you also have the wind from the actual waterfall. So you have to make a decision in your fishing. Either you high stick it and you risk the wind wreaking havoc with your leader and blowing your natural presentation all over the place, or you place your fly in and you keep your leader down low on the water trying to keep your fly line out. It's one of those situations where it's the devil you love. You either have to do one where you, where you lose the ability to control your dry fly, or two, you have your leader on the water such that it might spook the fish. But either way, you gotta do something in order to catch them. Right at the base of this waterfall, we're able to see some fish milling around. And, uh, whoa, air time. This little rainbow came in and ate this pergon. Just outside of town, you have ample opportunity to catch all kinds of great little fish. And the further out you get from Lander, the bigger they get. Little pergon in the corner of the mouth. I've had an absolutely fantastic day today catching these amazing Wyoming jewels. It's just super fun. All right, that guy's gone. Put the fly in my thumb. That's okay. Show you the rig we've got here. We've got about six foot of 3X leader tied to a 4X tippet. To that, we have a parachute Adams. And then on the dropper, We've got a tungsten head Pertagon in orange. It's barbless, with tiny little tail, jig head style. It's putting on a clinic on these little rainbows and brown trout today. Most visitors come to Lander, Wyoming to experience the great outdoors, specifically the Wind River Range, a section of the Rocky Mountains that has a peak of over 13,000 feet. It has more than 600 miles of trails for hiking and is the longest range in the state. The surrounding landscapes are home to countless creatures, including grizzly bears, mountain lions, and moose. What an absolutely beautiful morning. We're about 10 minutes south of the town of Lander here in Wind River Country, Wyoming, on this great little high mountain stream. We're at about 7,500 feet elevation, and we're on the search this morning for browns and rainbows. I'm gonna start with a dry fly with a Pertigan uh, nymph underneath uh, and see what happens on the day. It's first thing in the morning, the sun is high, it is um, getting warmer, and uh, today should be a fantastic day. we go. Whitefish. Now, I'm not concerned about catching a whitefish here out of this pool right away. Because if you're catching whitefish, that's where the trout live, right? They often cohabitate together. And now I can get this guy out of the system and focus on catching brown trout. Still fun on fly. All right, little rainbow. Right at the tail of this little pool. Whoa! Little water walker. <laughs> Took the nymph right away, right at the tail. Now these are barbless, so you need to keep tight with them all the time. The water's freezing cold. It got down to about 39 degrees last night, just above freezing. 
There you go. Great fish to start the day. Okay, let him go. Okay, he's gone. This stream is much more wide open than the stream yesterday, making stealth even more important. The stream yesterday had mostly plunge pools that were very noisy. This noise allows you to get closer to the fish. Today, however, we have slower moving water with little sound. I have to make sure I don't make any noise or get too close. Fish have excellent hearing and sight. Notice I stay far back and cast to my target. There he is. All right. So this one took the nymph. I think this is the fish that came up and tried to eat the dry, missed it, and then a couple casts later came back and ate the nymph. Nice fish. So the adage does bear true, you know, you can catch all kinds of fish in lander and around lander. Some of them may be smaller, but the further you get out of town, the bigger the fish get. And this guy, that protagon fell out. He's a great rainbow trout. How do you like that, huh? <laughs> Perfecto. All right, so here's the fly I'm using. It's a, uh, it's a George Hunker Special. It's a tungsten bead-headed nymph, Pertigan nymph, uh, with a red collar. It looks like it's got some copper um, or brownish uh, thread around the shank of the hook. Uh, barbless, and uh, so far, it's doing fantastic. The equipment used in this episode are nine foot four weights and nine foot five weight rods and reels. Softer rods such as medium bend are better suited for small streams. There's no need for long casts. The reels can be click and pull. No need for heavy duty drag systems as the reel is there mostly as a line holder. The majority of fish are brought in by stripping the line. Another little guy, right on the drop. Little brown trout, nice. Rainbows and browns. There we go. Oh, that's a great looking brown trout, man. Again, ate the nymph. All right, let's get this little dude unbuttoned. That fly just falls out, he's gone. Now, in talking with local guide George Hunker here, who, uh, fishes out of Lander. Um, he's the one that turned me on to this little river. And uh, he said that you catch a lot of little fish, which is great fun on dries and, and with a dry dropper. He said, but you do have a chance of catching a big one, like a 20 inch brown trout or a 20 inch rainbow. That's what we're hoping for today. But if it doesn't come to fruition, it doesn't come to fruition. We're still having a blast. to be lucky than good. I was just moving up into the pool and uh, I guess I moved my rod tip a little bit and this brown trout came and ate the nymph. A little deeper fish and best fish of the day. I did not catch this fish, this fish caught itself to be completely honest with you. I was moving to fix to try to make my next cast and this little dude, this nice fish for a small stream came and ate this nymph. And I'm here to tell you that this is the kind of fish that they make stickers out of, for sure. Are you kidding me? <laughs> all right, this makes it worth it. All the small fish you plow through, which are so fun to tie lock horns and be able to catch and release one of these brown trout. Let's take a look at this guy. How do you like that? gorgeous brown trout and high mountain streams just outside of Lander, Wyoming on a do-it-yourself. Just perfect. All right, let's let this guy go.
Another little rainbow. On the inside seam of that rock, What fun, what absolute fun on a Sunday in Lander, Wyoming, not a soul to be seen and tons of fish to be caught. Put that down. Oh, they're just so strong, nothing but power. It's just after lunch and <clears throat> the clouds have rolled in. Things are starting to cool off. The front is coming this way and the temperature has dropped. So I'm gonna put on, warm up a bit. We're gonna continue fishing up this fantastic little creek. See if we can't get another big brown trout or two. It's a rainbow, it's a big one. It's a big brown trout. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. So we've been fishing this big pool a little while and um, I lobbed one up into the, into, the, into the still water and I gave this, and I gave it a twitch back. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Look at this thing. This is absolutely radiant. I gave it a twitch back under the indicator and it danced that nymph just a little bit. Dance, dance, dance like this and this big boy came up and ate it. Yes. Oh my goodness, what a fantastic fish. Look at the colors on this thing. It's late September, and I got one idea of what this big male is about thinking to do. All right, well the fly just fell out. Let this guy get back to his business. So, when you have confidence that there's a big fish in a pool, try something different. Just like that, what I was doing was I was letting that nymph settle under the indicator, giving that nymph line a little bit of a wiggle, which moved the indicator, which in turn rose up that nymph to make it look like it was emerging and that fish ate it. It was fixing to spawn, beautiful colors. Put your time in here in Lander. There are little ones, but you have the chance to dance with a giant. Fish. What is it? Oh, it's another brown trout. Awesome. Same technique. Had that in the dead water, just lightly jiggling that indicator, and it was enough to get this fish to eat. Make life easy on me too. <laughs> well, what do you what you don't know when you don't figure it out, right? All of a sudden you try something a little different, and that's two fish on two casts that are just great, great brown trout specimens. Super cool. So let me show you the technique that I stumbled upon in catching those last two fantastic brown trout. What I did was I roll casts out into the pool and uh, let the nymphs settle underneath the indicator. Just like that, okay? Once they've settled, or I believe they've settled, all I'm doing is giving the tip of my rod an S-shaped S wiggle. It's moving the indicator, which in turn is moving the nymphs on, underneath, and it drove those trout crazy enough that they just had to eat it. Change things up. If you're not getting bit and you think that there's a fish in the pool, make some changes and Maybe you'll just find success. Just about an hour's drive outside of Lander finds you in this fantastic river canyon upstream, and this place is known for big brown trout 
and also big rainbows. The further you go out of town, it seems the bigger the fish get, though you can catch them big in Lander proper. We're gonna head upstream looking for big rainbows, big browns, under an indicator, maybe some dry fly, and maybe even some streamers, strip some streamers in some of these deeper pools. Today should be a fantastic day. There we go. Right where he should have been. We've got this great big huge pool here and I've been fishing my way up and uh, got to the head of it where I figure it's probably pretty deep and there's probably some good fish up there and this little guy ate it. Ate the dropper, ate the nymph. Nice little rainbow. Ate the red pertagon. Beautiful fish. There we go, there's a good fish. So we threw some streamers through here, didn't move anything. And then uh, got this nice rainbow to come and eat, eat the nymph. But you know what, you know, people knock nymphing and they say the nymphing is not exciting, but when you see that Adams go down, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, it's just like dry fly fishing. Woo! Leaper. Oh, what a great fish. There we go. Can you beat it? I don't think you can beat this at all. Wild trout in Wyoming, it's absolutely stunning. They are jumpy. Fourteen, fifteen inch fish. All right, let's take a look at the fly that caught that nice rainbow. This is a, a Pertigon pattern tied by George Hunker, George Hunker Special. It's got a, um, a heavy, heavy bead head. It's a jig style fly nymph uh, with an orange throat and some um, gold and red ribbing uh, with a tiny little tail. Uh, if you notice the hook um, on these Pertigons, they actually are made barbless. They're not pinched down. Um, so when you're fighting these fish, you really have to keep that in mind that you don't allow them any slack. You'll see that on that last fish, I actually bowed to it on like fishing a tarpon um, to keep things tight, um, allow it to jump away from me. So there isn't, it didn't throw any slack in it. Um, and it was able, able to land these fish. So these, these flies though, if it takes a little bit to get used to fishing a purely barbless hook, but once you get it down, um, you'll see some great success and these pertigan patterns are absolutely fantastic. go. Good, good fish. Right against that rock ledge. What a fantastic spot. I had a small one come out and chase this nymph as I was pulling in and uh, decided I'd throw it right back in there and this great rainbow came and ate it. Get out of those rocks, bud. Come on now. Right in. Oh my gosh, you should see how red this fish is, how big its eyes are, and just how fantastic these rainbows are. Look at that. Absolutely moving. What a great fish. Look how red its cheek is, that stripe down its lateral line. 
just beautiful. And we can let him go. Oh, what a fantastic fish. Now, when you come to this region and you do it yourself, there's no harm in going exploring. Get out of your comfort zone, go for a walk. There's nobody here. We haven't seen anybody in days. These fish are unpressured and they're here waiting for you. Gosh, he came right between those rocks. Oh, what a fish. Right between the rocks. Are you kidding me? Oh, it's a brown trout. Beautiful. Oh. Up in the high country, fishing dries and droppers for wonderful, wonderful wild fish. This Perdigon happened to just accidentally float right between two rocks and this brown was sitting there. He actually came up on the rock and ate it. I watched him eat it at about six inches of water. Oh, what a thrill. Short, fat, ball of fun. <laughs> Do it yourself, people. It's well worth it. Talk to the guides, talk to the locals. Buy some flies, they'll help you. This is possible, you can do this. If I can do it, anybody can do it. It's absolutely great. Listen, I wanna thank everybody at Wind River Country and uh, all my friends here in the area for helping us out. Um, it's been an absolute thrill, an absolute thrill. I picked up the phone, I called, called George Hunker. He told me where to go, he told me what to use. He was a very, very, very amazing distant guide. Uh, this place is absolutely incredible. So thank you. For all of us here at the New Fly Fisher, I want to thank you for watching. Remember, adventure is out there. What better way than to go and find it with a fly rod in your hand? From everybody at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching. My name's Mark Melnick, and hopefully see you in the West with one of these bad boys. <laughs>